Hello, and welcome back to an only mildly plague-ridden episode of a weekly deathmatch. Deathmatch? Hang on, sorry, what fucking year is it? The weekly waypoint? Hi, I'm not deathmatching. I'm not shooting at people out the side of this car. I'm just racing it. Um, and I say only mildly plague-riddled, because it is slightly plague-riddled, but week three, and we are on the mend. Although I did think that about a week and a half in, and then it kind of came back to me a couple of days after, so... Who knows? But enough about me, he said, abruptly ending the video, which was just about him. Now, this one's 16 and a half minutes long, so I should probably fill it with some sort of commentary, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, it's it's long because I decided to do, like, a championship of PvE races in Forza Horizon 4, but that only was 8 minutes long, and that's too short, and then an another one was another 8 minutes long, and that now it's 16 and a half minutes, and... Fuck it, I guess I'm doing slightly longer videos these days. Did you see my last old school RuneScape video? That was like 18 minutes long, and that was cut down. I mean, they're all cut down to be fair, but still, my point still stands. So yeah, we're back in Forza Horizon 4 this week. My driving is a little bit rusty because I've mostly been playing Hot Wheels Unleashed and am still playing Hot Wheels Unleashed. Very fun game. Go check out the previous two weekly waypoints if you want to learn more about that. But today it's Forza because the hype train for Forza Horizon 5 hit me this week. I realised it was less than a month away, and I promptly freaked out, and now I own the Ultimate DLC bundle. Did I talk about this last week? I feel like I might have talked about this last week. Doesn't look like I did, but I do think I talked about it somewhere. Um, but yeah, uh, I bought the Ultimate Edition of this game before it came out, and that was like 85 quid. So, um, damn. I'm glad that the Game Pass version exists, where you can just buy the DLC for £35, and then you can just have access to the game if you have Game Pass, which I do for at least another year, so that's fun. I like how I still have friends who are kind of against the idea of Game Pass because they want to be able to own their games and not worry about the fact that they're renting them, and if they don't pay, they don't get to play their games and stuff like this. And meanwhile, I'm out here buying DLC for a game that I don't even own. Phil Spencer sure did a number on me. Don't isolate that. No, but in all seriousness, I doubt that there's going to be any time in the near future where I'm not going to have Game Pass, and if there is, I'll probably be able to find a base game on sale, or failing that, I might have it long enough that when it reaches end of life status, they usually give the games to people who have spent any money in them, so... Um, it'll probably work out that way. But enough talking about spending money on the game, and more talking about the game. My god, I cannot wait. It's... It's, it's been a while since I've been, like, frothing at the mouth for a game release. Like, I was excited for Hot Wheels Unleashed, obviously, but I wasn't like, oh god, is it, you know, is it Friday yet? Like, when it was coming out and stuff. But yeah, they're doing one of those dumb, artificially engineered early access things, so I get it on November 5th, and people who don't want to spend extra money on the game get it November 9th, I believe? Or maybe it's November 11th or something like that? I've never liked that. It's uh, super phony, but, um, well... I went for it, didn't I? I wouldn't have gone for it if it was that by itself, though. Like, I know I'm going to be playing the expansions, and I'm going to enjoy the car pass and the VIP stuff and all that. But, yeah. I'm talking about buying the game again, aren't I? I can't wait to go to Mexico. I can't wait to explore it, see all the different biomes. I can't wait to build up my car collection from scratch again. That's going to be really exciting. I can't wait to hunt achievements. I want to see how much of the original 1000 gamer score I can get in that game before it inevitably gets added to. I think more than anything, I'm just excited to race again. Like, I noticed when I was racing here, I don't spend a lot of time in Forza Horizon racing anymore. Um, because I've already done all of that progression stuff. Um, you know, it's not like I can't still get stuff out of doing it, it's definitely something that's still there for me. But, uh, in terms of, like, oh, I should probably be getting the achievements by finishing this story by, you know, the stories of things where, like, you have, you're put in a certain car and you have to go to, from A to B in a certain amount of time or stuff like that. Um, they're not typically, like, races like these are. So I'm excited to just race my way for a story campaign again. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Alas, it is still two and a half weeks away, but oh my god, it's only two and a half weeks away. And you know what comes out the week after that? Fucking Halo Infinite, baby. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit confused, because I recently heard, uh, one Ross O'Donovan of a Rubber Ross YouTube channel, uh, talking about how he's bummed that the Halo Infinite single-player and multiplayer are being released separately, but... Everywhere I've looked online states that they are releasing simultaneously, so I I guess that one person has their wires crossed, and now I'm doubting everything I've ever known. That happens a lot with some of the podcasts I listen to as well. They'll just get something wrong, and I'll be like, wait, what? And it'll really bother me, even when I go out of my way to find out that, you know, they were wrong. But there's nothing worse than someone who 
replies and going, uh, by the way, you were wrong about the release date of Metroid Dread or something like that, you know? Fucking hell, speaking of Nintendo release dates, Pokemon comes out soon as well, doesn't it? Uh, luckily it comes out in the payday after this one, so <laughs> I can justify buying that one later on. But we've learned some more stuff about Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, such as the fact that XP share is going to be a thing from the very start. Yes, but it's going to be mandatory. No! I'm, I'm annoyed on behalf of the people who don't want that because, you know, if you're making the game, if you're building the game as like this really um, faithful remake that's um, as faithful as it could possibly be to the original games, then, um, well, first of all, I didn't want that. I wanted something more akin to Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. But second of all, um, I think that if you're going to market it that way, you need to allow people to have some control over the level of challenge. Do they want the old style of challenge, as in what the DS games had? Um, because as, as much as I disagree with those people, they do exist, um, not liking the XP share as they do. Um, you just just make it a toggle, it's easy, right? But then Nintendo games never have been one for giving the player uh, control over their own experience. But, you know, that's, that's some shade to throw at a company that's never going to know I even exist, isn't it? But anyway, we learned some other niche information about those games, which is like the stuff I would have liked to hear in a trailer, because, you know, that's the stuff that's the most important to me, but Nintendo were like, oh, you don't care about that, you want to know what's going to happen in the story of the game. That's like, guys, I know what's going to happen in the story of the game. I still think it's dumb that just like Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, they're shying away from the emerald or platinum elements of a game. Like, if you're going to remake the game, why not remake the best version of that game? It, it's just, like, they are literally opting not to include content from the most complete version of that game and calling it a definitive remake. It's baffling. So as you can tell, I'm still a little bit divided on how to feel about these remakes, but I'm still going to be getting them because it's... It's a um, gen that's very close to my heart. It's like the first... Uh, I've, I've gone over this many times already, but Pokemon Diamond was the first Pokemon game I really, really got into. And I think Leaf Green shortly after that, or maybe slightly before. I, I actually can't remember. <laughs> I always forget and have to go back and check my notes because I write notes about these things because I'm sad like that. But I'm pretty sure Pokemon Diamond, off the top of my head, it was definitely the first physical Pokemon game I had. Like, if I played Leaf Green, Fire Red before that, it was on an emulator. And then I did physically own Leaf Green after that and get really into it on my uh, DS through the GBA stuff on there. So yeah, there's the three games I'm really excited for. Did I talk about Halo? I, I kind of skipped over it, didn't I? Basically, I'm trying to push through the campaigns now to make sure that I'm all caught up before Halo Infinite comes out. I'm most of the way through DST now. Uh, which means I'll just have Halo 4 and 5 to play. Don't make that face I'm playing Halo 5, no matter how bad the criticism is. I enjoyed the Star Wars sequels, so I have a pretty low bar, so don't worry about me. I would just like to point out the several asterisks after the word enjoyed, but, you know, let's leave it at that. But currently, I'm stuck in uh, the... I mean, Halo fans will know which level I'm on about. It's a level towards the end of ODST where you're in a banshee flying around and you have to open all of these doors, and I got to the part with the scarab, and I blew the scarab up, and then the game didn't tell me where to go or what to do and I spent ages flying around trying to figure out where to go or what to do and then someone disabled my banshee and I fell into the river um, someone had to build a helicopter to save me no it was not Lego City but um, then I respawned and had to fight the scarab again and I just kind of rage quit well to be fair I don't really rage quit games I more exasperation quit them so that's the kind of thing where I probably wouldn't touch the game again for months after that. I'm going to have to make myself go back and push through it because I want to be able to play Halo Infinite's campaign on equal footing with people who know what's going on in the story. Even though I'm sure it's going to be like a, oh if you've never played Halo, Infinite is a great place to start, it's a soft reboot kind of a thing. That's the vibe I got from that Halo campaign preview we got all those months ago. Would you another one, right? Surely? Maybe next week. Maybe next week would you another one. In fact, you know what, this comes out on Monday at 6pm, maybe it's already happened. Although I think Xbox tend to do their stuff on Tuesdays and Fridays mostly. In terms of levels of excitement, I don't think Halo Infinite is truly up there for me. Like, I've played the multiplayer beta, it's a good Halo game. Uh, but I'm still so new to the Halo franchise in general that I don't have this, like, terrible thirst for a new Halo game that most people have. I've still got new Halo games, quote-unquote, to play. Um, like, I've never played Halo 5's multiplayer. Um, and I've never played Halo 4 and 5's campaign, you know? So I think that's why I'm not, like, frothing at the mouth hyped. Like, it's really good from what I've played, 
but so are the other Halo games that I've I've dipped my toe into so far and still have lots of playtime in to do. Unlike something like Forza Horizon 4 where I jump into the game having reinstalled it because I'm so excited for Forza Horizon 5 and I get in and go, yeah but I already own all the really cool cars in this one and you know I've already raced all of these races before, you know. It's not quite like a content drought like you get at the end of a World of Warcraft expansion because it's two very different gameplay loops. Like, it's just inherently fun to race cars in this game, um, so it's repeatable content is more fun, but there's there's definitely like a, uh, I kind of just wanted to be downloading and playing Forza Horizon 5, but I can't do that yet. If you're wondering why I haven't mentioned Pokemon Legends Arceus in my hype train segment, um, it's because I still don't know if I'm going to like that game, really. I'm still a bit tentative about it. Um, I mean, like, we've only just learned it's not actually a massive sprawling open world game like they were kind of presenting it as, which is a bit of a red flag. But I'm sure it'll be good. I'm sure people are going to love it. I just don't know if I'm going to love it. I'm very particular uh, about gameplay and Pokemon spin-offs and stuff like that. So I'm probably going to uh, get Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and then hold off, see what uh, Pokemon uh, Legends Arceus is like the kind of reviews it gets, the kind of first impressions I hear from people, uh, and then I'll see if I want to spend more money on that one at a later date, maybe past launch, maybe past launch. It's it's still weird to be like playing all of these brand new games on brand new hardware as they come out. Well, I say brand new hardware, I haven't got the OLED Switch or anything, don't get me wrong, but like <laughs> I was like a fairly early adopter of a Switch, and obviously I was a day one Xbox Series S player, and um, Sometimes I, I still like go, oh right, yeah, I'm an adult, I can work to afford things like this and this is just this is just what I do with my life and it's pretty cool. Now I mentioned World of Warcraft, I've kind of fallen off of it and you might be like, wow, that was fast. I agree, it was fast. I'm going to try and not let it slip by the wayside entirely. Uh, I think when the Hallow's End event comes out, uh, well, today is the time of you watching this, um, or the time of it being published at least, I'll probably be getting back in there to farm that Headless Horseman mount, which I'm absolutely definitely going to get this year, for God's sake, I just, I need that mount, I'm probably never going to use it, it looks old as hell at this point, I've got so many cool mounts, but I need that mount. But in terms of the last week or so, I've mostly been playing RuneScape. Uh, old school RuneScape that is because me and Reese made group uh, Iron Man characters and this probably isn't a shift I would have made alone if group Iron Man hadn't come out I wasn't about to go and jump and dive back into old school RuneScape or even RuneScape 3 and continue my Iron Man account on there or anything like that but um, Reese brought up group Iron Man a couple of weeks ago when he got an ad for it and I was just like you know what I just want to play games with my boy and it's been really nice to kind of just like have this little chat channel where I'm like, okay, I'll put this in the bank for you, and he's like, oh, okay, I'll get this done, get this done for you, so you can do this. It's like, oh, okay, cool, you know, we're working in tandem, like I'm doing kind of woodcutting and fletching and making arrows and stuff, and he's kind of doing a, the, I almost said blacksmithing, he's doing, um, oh my god, what's it called? Right, sorry, yes, it's called smithing, I just had a stroke, I think, I had to look it up, I forgot what the skill was called, but yeah, he's focusing on some mining and smithing and stuff like that, um, so... It's it's been pretty fun so far. Damn, is old school RuneScape Iron Man challenging though? Like, if you if you thought you'd heard me rant about closed loops in RuneScape Freeze Iron Man challenge, oh boy, that was nothing. And when I say closed loops, I mean like, oh, to do A, I should do B first, uh, and to do B, I should do C first, and to do C, it'd be really helpful if I did A first. Oh wait a second, you know that kind of thing that happens very often in that game mode. But like I said, the pain is all part of the fun. Why are we doing this to ourselves? Oh, and the Animal Crossing Direct bloody happened, didn't it? Um, I guess I should have put this in the hype section of a video, but maybe this entire video is just hype. The uh, Animal Crossing update, I believe, coincides with a DLC release on November 5th, so I'll be playing Forza Horizon 4, 5, sorry, 5. But I do intend to boot up the old island and have a look around at the free update, and, um, you know, in a, in a better world where I earned a little bit more money, I'd probably buy the DLC too, but I can hold off on that for a while. I do love the idea of Happy Home Designer, but I also know it's going to be one of those things that I go, oh, that was really cool, that house I designed, and then, you know, I probably won't touch it again for months, <laughs> even though it's all about designing, you know, multitudes of houses. I'm like, hey, I did one in the end, because that's how my attention span works. But my god, the update, the 2.0 update for Animal Crossing uh, New Horizons, looks phenomenal. It looks like 
it adds pretty much everything. Like, I would have liked a upgradable Nook store. That's pretty much the only thing left on my list. But they brought back, like, all of the um, kind of visitor uh, vendors from previous games via Harvey's Island. Uh, they, I did not prepare for this ramble, by the way. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head everything that they're adding. It's a lot. I am just trying to think about what I'm most excited about, to be honest. I never quite got the hype behind the roost. Um, I enjoyed that area in Animal Crossing, uh, let's go to the city, or city folk or whatever it was called everywhere else. Um, but I never got around to building it in New Leaf because, as it turns out, I don't think I actually saw most of what New Leaf had to offer after watching Chugga Conroy's Let's Play of it. Um, I, I was never very good at grinding bells, um, so I was charmed to the teeth to see Cap'n return with his little sea shanties. Um, I'm kind of confused about the point of him taking us to islands though. Uh, from what I can gather, the difference between that and the Dodo Airlines stuff is that these islands will be at different times of the day and at different times of the year, so maybe you can go and catch some fish off season, um, stuff like that. There'll probably be like a guide to get the best, you know, season island to farm the richest butterflies or something. But yeah, dude, I'll probably boot up Animal Crossing and get back into it for a few days at least. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, like I said, my attention span sucks, but I'm excited to get back into Animal Crossing in an era where I have this Elgato and I can make YouTube videos about my time on the island of Inkwell because I did spend, uh, if my switch is to be believed, I think around 80 hours there, which is, um, you know, it's it's chump change compared to what some of my friends have put into that game, but for me that was a, that was a fairly decent time sink for a few months there and it'll be nice to go back and revisit all of my villagers and have stuff to do again. So yeah, bloody hell, we've got an exciting few weeks ahead of us. Thank you for listening to me ramble about it, and let me know what you're excited for in the comments below.